Hi everyone. Now what I'm looking at here is a beautiful four and a half carat rough sapphire from Scrubweed in central Queensland, Australia. You can see there that's the cross table. It's there you go. Very, very light green, almost yellowish, and on table it's a beautiful light blue. There's the cross table. There's a couple of little flaws which I'll preform out. Now in this video I'm going to be uh, pausing it as I go from step to step and then showing you more about what the facets are going to look like as we progress with cutting rather than seeing the whole cutting sequence which I've already done in previous videos. Okay, so I'm just going to give this one a quick preform up and we'll have a look. So I've just started to grind a flat where I'm anticipating the table facet will be cut and you can see there on the upper end there's a bit of a shadow of light there you can see there is a flaw so we're going to lose a bit of that end of the stone which is fine this is what happens okay so I'm going to cut that one out and get back to you soon Okay, so I've got a nice clean piece of material now to work with. I've gotten rid of most of the floors. There's still some little, you know, little tiny ones that'll come out in the cutting. The colour is, is beautiful. Now, I'm not sure whether it's going to cut blue or more of a party or maybe the cross table and table will interplay and it might be more of a teal. Um, it's not a big stone. It's got 3.9 millimeters depth. So if I just lower the angles a little tiny bit on the crown, I'm thinking I should be able to get a carrot. I'm hoping I can get a carrot. But even if it's under a carrot, it's going to be a beautiful stone and definitely worth cutting. Okay, now I'm going to dop it up. It's all dopped up now using my lighter method for dopping and with some dopping wax. All right, so I'm going to start shaping the stone and coning it, alternating between coning the pavilion, probably on 41 for this one, yeah, and or maybe yeah, 40, and then I'll do the mains at 41. 41.5 and just rounding it rounding the girdle so we make sure we've got enough depth to cut the crown okay I'll be back in a minute so I've just started rounding the gem and bringing it or coning it to bring it up to a culette we've still got a fair way to go so it is going the diameter is going to be bought in quite a bit and I may have to move it slightly over towards this chip here which we just do by reheating and pushing the stone over a little bit and at this stage you really can look to make sure there's no unseen flaws and get an idea of your color zoning so we've got a yellow color zone coming in there with the blue over the top so I think we will get blue into the culette of this stone which is really what I want because it's such a beautiful blue and it's going to be a light stone. Okay, so I have got this stone nicely rounded. There is approximately a third of the stone left for the crown. Maybe a tad less, but I'm going to maybe cut the crown just a tiny bit shallower. The, I've done 16 mains on the pavilion. And they're pretty much just roughed in at this stage because we are going to go to pre-polish now and make them more perfect. I also haven't bought it exactly to a point yet because I'll do that on pre-polish and I don't want to waste a single point of this precious sapphire. Now before I mentioned it was 3.9 millimetres depth in the rough so in a round brilliant we should get approximately one and a half times the depth as the diameter. 
So a four millimetre diameter would, with standard angles, would get you a six millimetre. Sorry, what did I just say then? A four millimetre depth would get you a six millimetre diameter, which equates to a one carat sapphire. Okay, so I'm going to pre-polish uh, my girdle, the mains, and then I'll show you, and then I'll cut the brakes in. Okay, and 16 mains should give it a bit more sparkle. So here we have the pre-polished pre -polished mains and girdle. Now at this stage there should be no flaws or cracks or chips or anything like that unless you want them there. I've got some beautiful colour happening. Now I'm going to put in the brakes. Sorry about the focus going in and out. I'll get it all sorted eventually. I'm going to put in 16 brakes now in between the mains and they're going to be very long and narrow. Okay, so I've cut the brakes in. You can see what's left of the mains now is very, very long, narrow, slim facets. So we've got 16 mains and 16 brake facets or girdle facets, whichever you want to call them. And so there's, I think I put them, so if you put the mains in at about 41, your brakes will go in at about 42, 42 and a half, depending on how long and narrow you want them. And to do that, right, so I'm cutting round brand on a 64 index, but you may be using a 96. So I've got my mains at the blue, 64, 48, etc. And I've got the brakes or girdle facets at the red, two, oh, sorry, 62, two, six, etc. So now I'm just going to go and polish everything. I'll start with the girdle, polish the girdle, then polish the brakes and polish the mains. And some of the brakes are a bit overcut. So when I polish the mains, I'll just make sure I polish them down until they nicely meet the girdle. Okay, pavilion all finished. Got a nicely polished stone. No chips, no scratches, no flaws. Looking beautiful. So now I will transfer it over and cut the crown. Now I've used 1800 pre-polish and 50,000 polish. I have tried 100 polish before, 100,000 polish before. I really couldn't tell any difference. I think maybe you could under a microscope, but just by the eye, I couldn't tell any difference between 50,000 and 100,000. But just whatever you like using. If you're going to use 100,000 polish, you're better off using a 3,000 pre-polish. Otherwise, it's too big a jump from 1,800 to 100,000. And I am not a competition cutter. So I'm not aiming for perfection, but I am aiming for precision facets, precision cutting, and bringing out the best in the gem. I usually do a wax to wax transfer, unless the stone is heat sensitive. So that is my wax to wax transfer. Stone successfully transferred. Now I'm going to put in some mains. I'm just going to grind them in on a worn out 600. And they'll be lined up with the pavilion facets. They're going to be pretty shallow on this stone. Uh, maybe 35, 34. 
I'll just work it out until I can get a 50% diameter table. So I've roughed in some crown mains there. The table's still a little bit big for my liking, but of course pre-polish is going to bring those mains down a bit more. And I've left the girdle reasonably large. I don't like a tiny girdle. That's as pretty much as small as I would go because once we pre-polish and cut the brakes in, it's going to be even smaller but I like quite a nice solid girdle okay now I'm going to pre-polish those mains and here we have the crown mains all pre-polished they don't have to be exact at this stage just roughly even and creating an octagon that'll be the table that's about 50% the width of the stone. So I've just very lightly ground the table in there on 600, or I've worn out 600. Now I'm going to pre-polish and polish the table. So we have it set up for table polishing. I cut my table and polish it at this stage of the process. A lot of people do it last, but everyone has their own process. Okay, so I've finished the table here. And this is sometimes one of the most exciting parts of cutting a gem because once you've polished the table you can get an idea of what sort of clarity you've got what sort of color lightness and the fact that I can see the pavilion even though it's dopped in wax um, makes me believe that this will be a really beautiful light stone you can see a bit of blue silk on the right hand side there that's only going to add to the luster of the finished gem it's going to be beautiful and maybe more of a party than a straight blue but I think the blue is probably going to be dominant okay so I've finished pre-polishing the mains now they're all nice and even. I'm happy with the size of the table. And those mains should all form a perfect octagon, well, near enough to perfect octagon around the table. Once again, we don't have to be perfect. But it, we, we do like to aim for a high standard. These gems have spent millions of years in the making and we really want to do our best by them okay now I'm going to cut in the stars and here's the stars cut in on pre-polish I like to cut my stars a little bit deeper than is usually in the designs so they come almost halfway down the main facet all right they're all nice and even so now on to the brakes the brakes being the last set of facets i will cut them in just where they fit so i will play around with an angle just start touching them in left to right left to right and then I'll adjust the angles until I get all the meats right. <laughs> 